So from experiencing the world around us, we know that solids come in many different forms, sizes, and shapes. Now in this lecture, we're going to look at exactly that. We're going to examine the different type of structures formed by solids. So two main types of structures exist, and we'll talk about crystalline solids, or simply crystals, and amorphous solids. So let's begin with the crystalline solids. So all crystalline solids, or simply crystals, have a very well-ordered shape or structure. And because of that, they have a very sharp melting point. What that means is that the melting point's range is very small. It melts over a very, very small range of temperature. Now, four main types of crystalline solids, or simply crystals, exist. Ionic crystalline solids, metallic crystalline solids, molecular crystalline solids, and network covalent crystalline solids. Now, let's begin with our ionic crystals. Now, these crystals consist of ions that are held together by electrostatic forces. Electrostatic forces are forces between positively charged ions and negatively charged ions of different atoms. Now, let's see in some examples. Sodium chloride is an ionic crystal. Lithium chloride is also an ionic crystal. Uh, calcium chloride or calcium dichloride is also an ionic crystal. And basically, whenever an alkali metal or an alkali earth metal reacts with a halogen, these guys will always produce, or will most of the time, actually will always produce ionic crystals. Now, let's look at metallic crystals. Now, these guys consist of single metal molecules that are held together by a sea of electrons. And examples include any type of alkali metal or alkaline earth metal. For example, uh, a copper solid, which actually isn't an alkaline or alkali metal, uh, but is a transition metal. But still, it, it's, a metal, <clears throat> it's a metal that has a metallic solid structure. Other examples are um, sodium metal or potassium metal or lithium metal or calcium metal. Any of these guys have a metallic-like structure, a metallic crystal structure. So now let's look at the third type of crystalline solids known as molecular solids. Now these crystals or these crystalline solids consist of molecules held together by intermolecular forces called van der Waals forces. And examples include ice. In other words, when you freeze ice, when you take energy away from water and form ice, the water molecules form a very structured uh, formation. And this creates what we know as ice. And ice are called molecular crystals or molecular solids. The fourth and final type of crystalline solids we're going to look at are network covalent crystals. Now, these consist of network of atoms or molecules held together by covalent bonds. And these covalent bonds can be both nonpolar and polar covalent. Now, an example is diamonds. So what's the structure of a diamond? Diamond consists of solely carbon atoms held together by covalent bonds. These sigma covalent bonds are very strong. And that's exactly why our diamonds are so strong. It's very hard to break diamonds. Now, let's look at the second type of sol or structures of solids. And these guys are known as amorphous solids. Now these guys don't really have a well-structured shape and because of this they melt over a very wide range of temperatures. Examples of this include, include some plastics and some glass. Now we should also mention that there is another type of solid or another type of formations that solid, solids form and this is called polymers. Now we can have both polymers of uh, amorphous solids and polymers of crystalline solids. Now, when we melt polymer solids very quickly, we get amorphous solids. When we melt polymers very slowly over a very long range of uh, time, we get crystalline solids. Now, some examples of biopolymers, biological poly uh, polymers, in include DNA, uh, proteins, which are basically composed of many amino acids, uh, macromolecules such as carbohydrates, uh, glycogen, for example, starch. All these guys are examples of biological polymers. 
And for example, this marker is composed of a plastic polymer. And in fact, many different plastics are composed of uh, polymers of single units of molecules.